Ooh, that's bright. What is that? It's a reflection of some metal on my face. Because that's what we're going to be talking about today. Laser etching with a CO2 laser on metal. And not just one metal, like stainless steel tumblers. We're going to be talking about that, plus copper, plus brass, plus aluminum, and some more stainless steel. And we're going to be laser etching all these materials with Brilliance laser inks. And I'm going to show you how to get it done. So stay tuned, buckle in, and let's do this on Laser Engraving 911. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to be using today to uh, laser etch uh, onto these metals. The product we're gonna be using is called Brilliant Laser Inks. And this is a spray that gets put onto the surface of the metal that you're trying to laser etch. It's one thing to point out is that we're not laser engraving. We're actually laser etching on the surface of these metals and we're creating a permanent black mark that will withstand all the elements. It can be used outside. Uh, it, it's a very strong permanent mark when done right. And of course, on Laser Engraving 911, we're gonna show you how to do it the right way. This is a great product. Um, I've got links to it in the description below. Uh, this spray right here will allow you to mark on all these metals and probably some other metals too, but I haven't tried it on other ones. I've only tried it on these metals, which, you know, is pretty much some of the main metals. Um, but this is the product we're gonna be using and talking about today. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first part before you're gonna laser etch any of these metals is you wanna go ahead and clean the surface of the metal that you're gonna laser etch, uh, that we're gonna actually put the spray on. You don't wanna have any oil or anything that could mess with uh, the spray uh, resting on the, on the metal. So you can use any kind of cleaner you want for these metals. I would advise that you use something that doesn't leave an oily residue. So something that would be not good for, for doing this would be like goof off or something like that. That's kind of an oil based, petroleum based cleaner. Um, what I like to use is technical grade methanol. And uh, this is a product that I use to clean the surface of metals all the time because it doesn't leave any residue behind. And I feel like it does a great job at getting uh, adhesives off and sticky stuff off and it dries really quickly. Um, you definitely want to wear gloves when you're using this product. I'll put a link in the description below on where I get this from. Um, so let's go ahead and start cleaning the surface of, of these metals and <clears throat> show you how it's done. So I usually just get a microfiber cloth, grab some methanol, dab it on there, grab the surface and you don't need to use a lot. And that's it. I just give it a wipe, you know, of all the surfaces. Now you notice that I'm wearing gloves and it's not just for the methanol, it's because I wanna wear gloves while I'm using the Brilliance Laser Ink Spray as well. If you wanna wear a respirator when you're spraying, which is always a good idea when you're using paints or any kind of aerosols, uh, you should do that also. You could get yourself a 3M respirator or um, a, a paper mask, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so I am just, see, I haven't even redabbed the methanol. I'm just using what's already on here. You really don't need that much. Uh, I just want to make sure the surface is clear, uh, for what we're about to do. So I'm going to put the uh, cap back on the methanol real quick. And you want to do that because it, it does evaporate, uh, pretty quick if you leave the cap off. So don't do that. All right. So we got our gloves on and now we're going to start spraying and uh, let's go ahead and, and start with the brass first. Shake up our can. You always want to do that. I usually shake it for about 30 seconds. Now we've talked about spraying stuff before and it really isn't that different um, for this product. You don't need a whole lot of it. You just need to make sure you have even coverage on the surface. So uh, what I mean by that is um, you don't need to have so much Brilliance laser inks on here that you can't see the metal anymore. You just need to make sure that the coating that you put on is even. So let's go ahead and just show you how to do that.
holding it about six inches away. And that's it. So even though you can still see a little bit of uh, brass through there, that's actually okay. You don't need to put so many layers of Brilliance Laser Ink on there that you can't see the brass anymore. That, that, is, that is not how you apply this product. It's not necessary. What I have on there is enough. It dries pretty quickly. It takes about five minutes out here in a nice dry day like this. Um, if you need to speed up the process, you can also do the old trick where, you know, you throw it in your laser bed and turn on the exhaust fan and dry it a little quicker that way. But that right there is good. Let's go on to the next piece, our piece of copper here. About six inches away back and forth. Now, if you run into a situation, if you run into a situation where you're spraying the spray on and you're seeing puddling or like spots, it's because you've got some kind of oil on there or some kind of residue that's not supposed to be on there. You're going to have to clean off the surface better. But when you spray this on, you should have a nice even spray and you shouldn't see any pockets open where, where it couldn't bond to. Let's do our piece of aluminum. Let's do our little stainless steel. You definitely don't want any drips or puddling or anything like that. And then last but not least, let's do our stainless steel tumbler. Now for this, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that I do, especially if I've got like 50 tumblers that I'm doing. I get this. And I got this off Amazon. This is a Lazy Susan uh, rotator. And uh, it is really cool when you've got a lot of tumblers to do or you need to, you don't, want to be like, you know, going like this or like this and get this stuff all over your hands. Because what you can do is you can just set it on the rotator and do your spraying as you're rotating the tumbler. And so this could work for large tumblers, any cylindrical objects. I guess it could work for a square object too. But it's really cool if you want to get a nice even coating. So say I'm just going to be putting a logo on this side. Um, uh, so I would want to get just just to be safe. I would want to get like half of the half of the tumbler So I would start here and remember when you're using this you always want to keep the lazy Susan moving You don't don't want to go too slow or too fast So you'll have to kind of play around but if you needed to do the whole thing because you were doing laser etching all over the tumbler uh, It would be great. So actually um, Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's pretend that we're gonna laser laser etch all over the whole tumbler All right I'm going to show you this one up close because that's what happens when you're shooting video out in the sun and your phone overheats from the sun. <laughs> it cuts your video off. So let's go ahead and do this one again a little bit closer. We're just going to keep it moving and we're going to stay our six inches away and I'm going to work from top to bottom. We're going to do full coverage on this tumbler. Keep it moving, nice and slow. There we go. And that is how it's done. All right, so before we start um, laser etching these metals, now that we've done spraying them, I wanna take a moment to go over kind of what is Brilliance Laser Ink Spray and uh, how it's different from engraving and kind of go over the manufacturer's suggested starting points for these metals and share my uh, personal settings for the metals that we're about to laser etch. So I've put together some kind of information on here that I just want to go over with you here. One of the things that I wanted to kind of explain a little bit is why you need to run 
your your laser etching settings slower on non-ferrous metals and those are metals like brass copper aluminum um, here is a little here's a little a little graphic that I made um, showing a piece of steel um, showing a thin layer here of the spray that we put on and then the CO2 laser source shooting down through the spray and hitting the metal and <clears throat> steel has a tendency not to uh, absorb so much heat uh, as as aluminum copper brass and things like that so the dot size is important and the heat is not being dispersed through the piece of metal uh, so much it's staying concentrated in an area which is what these kind of what 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 this spray needs is it needs the heat to be concentrated right where you need it and kind of stay there so it can create that permanent bond black mark to the surface of the metal so that's why you can use a faster setting most of the time on stainless steel mild steel and other steels and the job can get done quicker unfortunately if we scroll down a little bit when we're working with non-ferrous metals like copper brass or aluminum the heat from the laser beam when it goes through the spray and hits the metal these metals like to disperse the heat and you know that's why they make uh, you know they may, a lot of the time they make heat sinks out of these <clears throat> at least copper and aluminum because they absorb so much heat and that is kind of counterintuitive to what we're trying to do which is keep the heat in one area to create that permanent black mark so to compensate for that we need to run you need to run your settings slower uh, when you're when you're doing these types of metals to get that permanent black mark um, there is such a thing as running it too slow where you can you know create maybe not a black mark but kind of a brown mark or you can run it too fast and it looks like you created a nice mark but then when you go to wipe it off you find that the laser etching actually wipes off so you'll have to redo that um, and we'll go over should look like when you're finished with this whole process so let's take a look at uh, brilliance laser inks uh, suggested settings for for these metals uh, and these are these are great starting points um, for when you're doing your testing We've got general metals like tool steel, stainless steel, and uh, they've got, you know, a power of 30 to 100 watts, uh, speed of 10 uh, to 30 percent, just some general guidelines and a DPI of 600, and that's important because that's keeping that heat in a localized area. And we go down to aluminum, and you can see uh, the range that you can laser etch aluminum in and then you see dramatically you know this the speed uh, drops down because we need to keep that heat focused in that area for longer to get that permanent bond and then we get into brass and copper and other similar high heat conducting metals and we can bump up the speed a little bit um, and the DPI kind of always stays the same and these are general starting points from the manufacturer of this product. Um, when you make a test file, there's some test grids out there that I've seen that, you know, they typically what you want to do is, you, you know, make some squares about a half inch by half inch and create like a grid of these squares and try different settings with all the squares, then wipe it all off when you're done and see which one sticks. And that works too. Um, that's a, a great way is to make a, a, a group of these squares and just have different settings and each time drop your speed down or speed your, or, or speed up um, and you know brilliance I think even has a template uh, that if you contact them they might be able to share with you what I like to do is use one of those squares as well but I also like to throw in a graphic um, that has some really fine lines in it and other really fine points 
So that way I can get a really true representation of not just a big chunk of black, but also some fine laser etched black to really get the overall picture of what, what I'm trying to achieve by when I'm marking on these metals. Um, my personal settings that I use, I have a 120 watt epilogue laser that I found work for me when I'm etching these metals is on copper, brass, and aluminum. Uh, I have my laser set at 10 speed, 100% power, and 400 DPI. Now, I know that they say to start here at 600 DPI, but I'm always looking for how can I achieve a super permanent mark, a black mark, and get it done in the least amount of time possible. And I found that with my particular laser and my laser tube and my setup that I'm able to get away with 400 DPI, 10 speed, 100 power for copper, brass, and aluminum and create a very black permanent mark on all those metals. And for stainless steel, I can really get going pretty fast. Um, I found that a 60 speed, 100 power, 400 DPI um, works for me on all stainless steel because uh, remember it's not absorbing so much heat. So those are what settings that um, I'll be using when I show you these videos of the process being done. Those just know that those are my settings. Um, so and last but not least um, uh, I do have a code to offer uh, if you would like to try a can of this product, which I think is a great product. I wouldn't be talking about it unless I did. Uh, but you can get 10% off your purchase by using the code laser engraving 911 And you can just put that in at checkout and get a nice uh, discount on your first can to give this product a go. Uh, it's been really good to me, and clearly, I'm a big fan. So with that said, um, that's just a general overview of, of what's happening, why you have to slow your speed down, and some general guide, guidelines, starting points of where to get started. Uh, every laser is different. Every laser tube is different. Every machine is different. Um, some machines may not be able to go up to 600 DPI or equivalent. Just keep in mind that um, the, the higher the DPI, the longer the job will take. Um, so that's why uh, I tried to find a setting uh, that was very effective, but also to get it done in a reasonable amount of time. All right, so now we've gone over kind of the overview of the different manufacturer suggested starting points, my personal settings, and kind of how the process works with steel um, and what's happening with the heat and the laser being focused in a very specific area and why it sometimes needs to be focused there for a longer time to get that permanent black mark. Let's go ahead and actually go over to the laser machine and laser etch some of these pieces of metal. So now that we've uh, gotten all of our laser etching done, it's time to rinse off the Brilliance laser ink spray and reveal the nice etching on all these metals. And that's actually one of the easiest parts about doing this um, is how easy this spray comes off of the metal. It's really great. All you need is some water, a sink some gloves and 
<clears throat> I like to use this sponge here. You can see it's been used quite a bit. I definitely don't use this side because I don't want to scratch the uh, surface of the metal. I just use the soft side. And um, let's go ahead and see how our marks came out, starting with the brass. I'm just going to turn on a little bit of water here. Take our plate that we did here. And I'm not even going to actually scrub it. I'm just going to show you how easy this comes off. It's already coming off without me even doing anything. I can just wipe it off with my finger. And you see, I'm just using my sponge. I'm not even really scrubbing that hard. But I do want to show you something. So that was just the spray is off and there's our mark. And just to show you how permanent it is, I'm not going to use this the scratchy side because I don't want to mess up the metal. But you should be able, if you're doing this right and you've got your settings dialed in, you should be able to scrub really hard without any of it coming off. Just like that. You see that? I'm going nuts. Nothing. Still got a nice clean mark. Let's go ahead and do the next one. Let's try the uh, stainless steel plate that we did. Remember, we used a different setting on this one. There you go. Yeah, I'm scrubbing hard on purpose just to show you how permanent it is. All right, so that one's clean. All right, let's go ahead and try our copper. Here comes our copper plate. Again, not coming off no matter how hard I scrub. You should not see any of your laser etching come off while you're scrubbing like this. If you are, then you need to slow your speed down, adjust your power, and go back to the drawing board. Okay? Let's do our aluminum next. Here's our aluminum. Permanent black mark on aluminum. I don't know if you can see the detail on all these. It's really nice. Even the little fine lines inside of the tools there. Just a really clean nice mark and last but not least let's do our tumbler that we did a little wraparound graphic on sometimes when you have brushed stainless steel like these tumblers you want to kind of wipe with the grain it's a good idea remember i'm using the soft side of this sponge so whenever i'm doing tumblers i always clean the outside really good and then i give a little little splash on the inside too i got that got all that nice detail there go and that is how you clean brilliance laser ink spray off of the metals after you're done now what i like to do is instead of using a cleaning agent what you can do is i like to get a compressed air blower and blow all this water off so it's kind of a touchless drying rather than a wiping drying so i'm going to go over and do that now and then I will put these in the photo booth and we'll show you a close-up of all the finished products. Here we are in the close-up booth. We've got some better lighting here so we can kind of see everything. And, um, you know, this isn't like brand new spanking new metal. Um, so, you know, it's got little scuffs on it and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm not sure if the camera does it justice, but, um, you know, here you can check out some of the detail on 
the tumbler. I check out the piece of aluminum and how that came out. It's light a little bit. <clears throat> I got the stainless steel plate. Could be a name plate. We got our chunk of copper here, which came out pretty cool. And we got our piece of brass. So, you know, this, uh, this product right here, Brilliance Laser Inks, is one of my favorite products to use here in the shop. I use it on all kinds of stuff for different applications. It's very affordable. It gets the job done. In this video, I can give you some guides on where to start and, and the website is very helpful. It gives you some guides on where to start, which we talked about earlier in the video. Um, but you're gonna have to do some testing. You know, uh, there's a lot of different laser systems out there. Um, a lot of different types of laser tubes. Um, you've got metal laser tubes, you've got glass laser tubes, you've got glow forges, you've got uh, epilogues, you've got all kinds of different laser systems with different lenses, different spot sizes, different abilities, different wattages. You're going to have to dial in your setting to get this done. But I think with these starting points and showing you, you the process of how it gets done, I think that in no time, you guys will be on your way to marking metal with your CO2 laser. So before we go, I want to just give a big shout out to all my subscribers and people that have been involved on the channel. I appreciate most of your feedback. Uh, I heard a lot about uh, poor quality audio. So on this video, I tried to do my best to kind of upgrade that. I'm using a wireless lapel mic and hopefully you'll notice that uh, with everything going on in the background that you can hear my instructions and uh, my guidance a little bit better. This is my first time doing a YouTube channel uh, sharing my experience as a professional engraver and trying to help people out there uh, with their various engraving projects or if you're just getting started. So it's kind of like we're in this together. So your support is um, greatly appreciated. Uh, if you could share this video, like and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, that helps me out a lot. Uh, there's a place to go where you can learn how to be a professional laser graver, learn new laser engraving techniques. And don't forget that uh, everything that I use in my videos, whether it's a product like Brilliance Laser Inks or a tool or something, I list in the description below with links on where you can directly get those products. And uh, by using those links, you've helped me to support me in this channel so I can continue to make videos for you. So with that said, I think this has been a really fun tutorial. You got to learn how to use your CO2 laser to mark metals, not just one metal like stainless steel tumblers, but also some of the harder metals, uh, copper, brass, aluminum, meaning the ones that are a little bit harder to etch. But when you get your settings right and you get it all dialed in, I think you're going to find that it's actually not that hard to etch. And the laser etching that you can put on these metals is super permanent nice and black with this product and I think your customers in the end will be extremely happy with the product that you produce. So thanks again for coming over to Laser Engraving 911. We'll see you on the next video.